Hey everyone, welcome to KringleCon. Um, I'm Heather Mahalik and Santa personally invited me this year to do a talk on no two fits all, um, why building a solid toolbox matters. Not sure if that means I made the naughty list or the nice list so you can decide for yourself based upon what I'm going to share with you during this talk. Um, to just start, monogamy may not be the answer. And this is one of the hardest things that I find people have. They find one tool that they rely upon to do all their forensic investigations. And while that's great and it may help you, you really need to understand where is it lacking? Um, where may it back you into a corner in your investigation? The good news is you don't have to break your bank. There are a lot of free solutions that are going to exist that I'm gonna show you during this short talk. Um, you also have to be willing to test and maybe break out of your comfort zone a little bit and just try things that you may not normally do in an everyday investigation. But one thing to consider is what do you actually have time for? You are not going to have time to go file by file and look at every single item in your investigation. So you need to decide, do your tools actually help you or are they actually making your job harder? Um, I hope it's not the latter, but I find this all the time. To be honest, I have a tool that I use almost every single day and I found a major bug in it this week, which is frightening. So it's one of these things of what do you do when your tools fail you? What do you do when they contradict one another? Um, what happens when the tool updates? Does it actually make everything better or does it lose some capability? You have to even think about the developers that work behind these tools that we're using every single day. Do they test the same things that you rely upon in your investigations? So you need to be able to dig deep enough, understand what should be showing to you. In addition, figure out, can you say exactly with 100% certainty where that evidence came from? If you can't, that's when it's time to dig. You need to understand what put the data there and manually recover these artifacts. The worst thing you can do in your career is knowing just enough to be dangerous. And I always say that jokingly, but I've worked with many people who I felt like would speak the speak, but then if they had to actually do the actions, they couldn't do it. So you don't wanna have that situation. So Santa here, he wants me to show you about the truth. And we all know Santa always knows the truth. So the app, your app may actually know the truth where everything else is getting it wrong. So we wanna do a really simple task here. We just have to prove that a call was made on an Android, All right? That can't be hard. So we're gonna look. The call logs, the call of interest is supposed to be from January 17th, 2018. If we look closely here, we only have calls from July 18th, 2017. So at this point, some people would be like, it must not be this Android. And that's not true. When we look closely down here on the left, we see these custom and it says five. I hope that this would pique your interest if you're using a tool like Magnet Axiom here to say, wonder what's in there. So we're gonna peek. In here, we have an app called Silent Circle, Silent Phone. So I installed Silent Circle on this device, but it never activated. It would not work. Every time I tried to log in, it said I got a server error. To me, that means the app was never used. However, as you just saw, it stole my call logs. I gave this application permission to access my call logs. And instead, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna keep them all for myself. So maybe this is like the Grinch sneaking in and stealing everything from our call logs. But this app is telling me, hey, Heather, you keyword search for a phone number and I know five things about that number in a database called Dialer. Isn't this magical? You would think that that's probably call logs. And guess what? It actually is. So we have all this information here. This is where you may have to just branch out a little bit. I wrote a simple query, and as we see here, my query is saying exactly what I want it to look like, um, how I wanna convert dates and times. But do you notice my comments? I commented out times used, doesn't mean app was used. Last used, doesn't mean app was used. And then up here, date time, doesn't mean app was used. The reason I did that is I never used this application to call Kathy Bell. However, it took my information, stole it from my call logs, and put it there in its own little custom artifact. So what you could do to give back at Christmas is if you find something cool like this, the link at the bottom is for Magnet Forensics. It's a way for us to share artifacts like this so everybody doesn't have to keep digging through and doing harder work like this. We have to be realistic. We all want to press the button and have our call logs show up right here. But it doesn't always happen. 
So that's just a little example for you there. Something else you have to consider, you have all these fancy tools and you have all these cables in your devices. What happens if the data is only in the cloud? First thing you have to consider is do you have authority or consent to log into cloud data? You cannot just go rogue and log in and pull things from the cloud. That'd be very grinchy of you, so do not do that. And don't say Heather told you to do that because I did not. Um, these tools may require a warrant number. Um, the other tools should, and I say should because they don't all, remind you that you need proper authority. Um, the user is definitely going to be alerted. So if you're doing covert operations on behalf of Santa, you do not wanna log into cloud data because the user is going to get an email, be locked out for security reasons, forced to reset a password. You may have two-factor authentication. So there are many things to consider. And then the final thing that I want you to just think about is not all cloud captures are the same. I'm an iPhone user, Google has backup data for me. I don't back up to Google, or so I would think, but I log into Chrome. So really I'm backing up to Google. iCloud sync data is different than iCloud backups. So there's all these differences on what you have here. Um, here's just a little glimpse of, I used Apple Maps, couldn't find it on my device. So this is my data at rest on my phone. And you can see my history.maps data is from 11-7-2017. And that's old, that file's not even in use anymore. But then I searched for the most glorious cheese steak in Philadelphia, Jim's. Here it is. If you really want a Christmas trinket, get yourself one of those. And all that data was pulled from the cloud. So it may just exist there. You really have to branch out from our everyday freezing world here at the North Pole and go to cloud to get our artifacts. And then in reality, why does this stuff happen? Why can't the tools all get along and pull data from Android and iPhone? And really there's just too much data. There are so many controls that the users can change on their devices. There are so many apps. And a lot of these apps, why do the vendors care about it? I had to work the Starbucks application once. Do you think any vendor wants to parse Starbucks? No, they don't. I had to parse it for location artifacts. So it's just something to think about. Um, what about OS updates? They bother us and they're annoying and they're exciting at the same time. But think about the vendors. How are they handling all of this? Then there's mobile device management. There's knowing how the data got there. Did Google do it? Did Apple do it? Did Siri do it? Did Cortana do it? Alexa. So there's all of these things. Knowing how that artifact got onto your device, being creative and thinking about how you're recovering it is key. This is why we can't really do automation and we need a human that is not even smart enough in that field, just curious. Curiosity is what's gonna save you in smartphone forensics. So if you don't have time, this is where you have to decide what matters to you. My best advice to you is do not guess or put something in a report and put your name on it. That is not a list you wanna be put on, trust me. So make sure you take the effort to create test data, replicate, ask for help, reach out to, there's tons of listservs out there for people doing mobile forensics and people are really happy to help. And on that, here is Santa on the right hand side a nice little icon for you, and that's me always preaching from my soapbox, but this is my information. If you ever get stuck, I'm happy to help you. I would say reach out and look at my blog first and see if the answer is already there. And if not, Merry Christmas, everyone. Good luck with your hack challenge.